In this tutorial, we will implement outlier detection with dbscan algorithm on iris data sets using Python, Jupyter Notebook, and Anaconda. We will implement the whole data mining pipeline starting from data preprocessing, implementing the dbscan model, detecting outliers in the iris data set, and evaluate the dbscan algorithm using adjusted range score. Before starting this tutorial, we should already install Anaconda with Jupyter Notebook on our computer and we should also have sufficient knowledge of Python. If you haven't set up the Anaconda on your computer, I have provided the link of the tutorial on how to set up Anaconda with Jupyter Notebook on Ubuntu in the video description below. Now let's get started. First open your terminal and launch Jupyter Notebook. And after that, create a new Python 3 notebook and rename it. Then I will quickly import all the necessary libraries and briefly explain what each library does. In the first line, we imported datasets from SKLN library to load iris data. Next, we imported Seaborn library for making plots and figures. On the third line, we imported Pandas, which is an open source data analysis and data manipulation library. On the line 4, we imported the counter from the collections library for counting the outliers. On line 5, we imported the dbscan model from sklan. On the next line, we imported matplotlib for making plots and figures and to visualize the data. And on the last line, we imported the evaluation matrix, adjusted range score to, el to evaluate the dbscan model. After importing the libraries, we will load the iris dataset from Seaborn library. The iris dataset comes with many libraries as a built-in dataset. Next, we will have a quick look into the features of the iris dataset with the dot head method. The iris dataset has three different classes of flowers such as Satosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Each class has four features such as sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Every flower class has 50 examples in the data, which means that the data has total 150 rows. The last column species contains the class labels. On the next line, we will drop the species column and only keep the features of the data set. Since dbscan does not need the data labels for model implementation because it's unsupervised. At this point, our data is ready for model implementation. And we will implement the model by feeding these features to dbscan model. After this, we will move to our second step, which is implementing the dbscan model. The model implementation step is easy. The model takes two parameters. The first parameter is epsilon. Epsilon is the maximum distance between two data points for one to be considered as in the neighborhood of the other point. This is not a maximum bound on the distances of points within a cluster. This is the most important dbscan parameter to choose appropriately for your dataset and distance, fun distance function. We set the value of the epsilon to be 0 0.8. The second parameter is min samples. The min samples is the number of samples or total weight in a neighborhood for a point to be considered as a core point. This includes the point itself. We will set the value of min samples to be 19. Next, we simply fit our data features into the dbscan model and that's it for model implementation. At this point, our implementation is done for the model. After model implementation, our third step is to count how many outliers did dbscan find. To do this, we will first count the labels predicted by dbscan and then we will count how many of them are outliers and print the results. We can see at the top of the outlier table, there are two clusters predicted by dbscan, cluster 1 and cluster 0. Cluster 1 has 94 values and 0 has 50 values. While there are six values which are minus one, they do not belong to any cluster. These are our outliers, and all of these outlier values have been printed in this table. So dbscan has predicted six outliers based on the parameter values we passed to the dbscan model in the previous step. 
In the next section, we will visualize the clusters and outliers predicted by Davis Scan. I will quickly copy the code for the plot and pass it the data features and predictions made by Davis Scan model. We have a 3D plot with three features, petal length, petal width, and sepal length. We can see that there are two big clusters, the yellow cluster and the green cluster that DB scan found in the iris data based on the parameter values we provided in the model. We can also notice that there are a few black points at the top edge of the big yellow cluster. These black points are the outliers that we saw in the last step. Our next step is to evaluate the DB scan performance for predicting the clusters. We will do that by comparing the ground truth labels in the iris data and labels predicted by db scan. We will compare the labels by passing them to the adjusted trend score function. The adjusted trend score gives the value from 0 to 1. The value closer to 1 indicates a good score, while the value closer to 0 indicates the poor performance by the model. We can see that the adjusted range score for DB scan is 0.55. We cannot say that this is a good or a bad score because the interpretation of the results depend on what we are trying to achieve from our model. So that's it for the basic implementation of DB scan. The link to the code is given in the video description below. I hope you liked the video. Bye.